Hey guys, it's your girl Deanne and I am back again today with another insightful video. So today guys, this video is going to be about my reserve schedule and my reserve pay or my pay in general as a flight attendant. So I get a lot of questions from you guys and I love it, but I think the number one question is, can you survive on reserve, right? And other questions I get is how much are you making? What are your checks looking like? Um, how's the pay? So guys, I'm gonna answer a lot of those questions because guess what? Today, sis, I am spilling the tea, okay? I like to be transparent with you guys. And like I said, we are in this together. If you are thinking about applying as a flight attendant for my airline, because I can't speak for all airlines, um, you're gonna see today just how much money you're able to make or how much money I make. Now I have to give a disclaimer. The things I'm showing you in this video is all by individual results, meaning that it depends on how hard you grind, the trips you pick up, anything can really alter your income. For me guys, this is my experience. This is my journey. So don't compare this to everyone who works for my airline guys, but I want to show you every paycheck that I have received with the exception of my paycheck on the 21st. So um, we haven't got that paycheck yet, but because Martin Luther King is Monday, it's a holiday, we get paid on the 21st. But every check, L oh, and another exception, okay? The training paycheck. But every paycheck that I've received up until those two points, you guys are gonna see. And then I'll kind of talk you through on how I made that money. And then you guys are gonna see my income go from disrespectful to respectful. So it's going to be a gradual climb, but guys, this is really um, about how to survive on reserve. When I tell you guys that my head is barely above water, let me insert a meme. So you guys saw the meme. So that is how I am surviving guys. I am almost this close to drowning, but the key is consistency. And that's what I'm doing guys. So I'm going to, like I said, walk you guys through, show you how to make money and how I make money. And again, everyone's results are different. Let this be a guide. If you are interested in my airline or just to kind of see how much money a reserve is making this reserve in particular, please stay tuned. And then I'll show you my schedule guys. So without further ado, let's start the video. Guys, a reserve flight attendant is someone who is available on call for a certain amount of days or time. And when I say on call, that means that you are available for crew scheduling to call you and assign a trip. Now guys, every airline is different, meaning that some airlines you can be on reserve for years, months, days, weeks. It just all depends on that base of what the airline you're with. I'm sorry, I have a cough drop in my mouth. So for example, with my airline, Denver is very senior. And what I mean by that is you got flight attendants who have been with the company for 25 years, which is how long my company has been around. 20 years, 15, 16, 10, eight, whatever. Now guys, I am very, very, very junior to these flight attendants who have been with the company that long. So the higher your seniority, you get more of a priority when it comes to trips, scheduling, scheduling, etc. So I really have no say so, but reserve life is definitely the toughest for any new flight attendant. And I mean, it's going to make you or break you. And I tell you guys this all the time. I think of the reserve life, like being the side chick. So the main chick is the line holder. They are the ones that get the better schedules, better control. They are the priority. Me, I'm the side chick. Crew scheduling calls me when there's a last minute cancellation, someone is sick, there's a flight that they need to fill up, put a flight attendant on. That's the only time they call me is for that really. You know what I'm saying? So that is how I kind of look at it. I am a side chick until I become a main chick or a line holder. And in Denver, I may never 
get a line like not anytime soon so the one thing I am doing is I am definitely looking at my classmates that's like a really good tip is we have a few bases and I'll just go over the bases we got Las Vegas MCO or Orlando ORD Chicago Denver Trenton Philadelphia and then we have this new base Miami that just opened up or I'm sorry it's going to open up in March so a lot of my classmates are transferring to Miami they can't get a line there because it's a brand new base and all these new people who are graduating more than likely the next few classes are going to Miami so someone who is from my class and we've been with the company for almost five months on the 28th of this month they will be very senior compared to someone who was new that just graduated and see I'm not chasing a line I want to make sure that I'm able to live before I start transferring places and right now guys Denver is the best choice for me it was either Denver or Vegas because they're both close to Arizona and that's where I'm from so yeah um, so that is what a reserve flight attendant is so just be mindful I always recommend before you apply or you go to a training class with the airline do your research see how most flight attendants like are they getting lines are they on reserve forever like I said reserve guys it's gonna make you or break you so just do your research but in a nutshell that's what a reserve flight attendant is all right guys so I want to talk about my airlines reserve shifts so for my airline guys there are two reserve shifts okay uh, you could do reserve A or reserve B reserve A is from 1201 a.m. to 1300 or to 1 o'clock reserve B is from 11 a.m. to 1159 p.m. so it's one minute off from 13 hours just about right I'm not sure why it doesn't end at midnight it's always a minute before or a minute after midnight so that is how my airline <clears throat> Um, how they do the reserve shifts now with this old well, I'm sorry the new contract is almost 13 hours with the old contract a reserve was on call for 24 hours so I am just so thankful that I'm not on the old contract because 24 hours being on call guys is very difficult like for me I am on reserve a the reason why I chose reserve a is because when I am off it's easier to find a flight when you get off at 1 p.m. versus when you get off close to midnight the only flight you can really take is a red eye right and I don't like flying that late at night I like to get a flight or not even like if I wanted to go somewhere if I had errands to run doctor's appointment it's easier for me to schedule things when I get off at 1 versus at 11:59 at night the only bad thing about that is if I decide to go out well you back on call at 1201 so it really doesn't make any sense going out when you're about to be on reserve but if I wanted to do anything I got the rest of the day off and even though I get mad anxiety from 1201 until I know I'm off at 1 p.m. it's because those are hours that your body is sleeping right 11 a.m. you can kind of play around that's like mid morning to 1159 that's fine but that midnight shift like I'm telling you it's so hard guys and so with that being said that is how my airlines how they do the reserve shifts so just remember during those times when you have your reserve period whether it's a two-day block three day four five six however you do it those um, hours is when crew scheduling will hope you will be available to take a call these are the times that you set up for right and just remember that as a reserve you being on call you being ready for crew scheduling is everything like I said we're on probation so there's a lot of things that really play into that but mainly those two shifts and honestly um, I wouldn't go with reserve B 
like I said, that 11 a.m. to 11.59 p.m., it just doesn't work out for me. Some people can do it, but I have a very hard time. I'm a night owl. So basically, that is how I look at it. But just remember that when it comes to your reserve schedule, guys, your shift, crew scheduling, ultimately, they have the final say-so. And what I mean is that as a reserve, we do not have too much control over our schedule. Yes, I can bid. You know, like we just had a, um, we bid it for February. So we always bid for our next month's schedule. Um, at, it's, like, it's like, there's like a certain time period. So I just bid it for February and I just got my schedule. So basically I can request to have certain days off specific days off i can reserve i want like a four day block here three day block there a six day block i can kind of make the schedule accommodate to my liking but honestly i have no control of what crew scheduling approves i mean and it does go by seniority as well and like i said for my class i am at the bottom you know my employee number ends in five eight so i am at the bottom of my class so when it comes to that, you have to have the expectation that you may not get the schedule you want. I try to do three or four day blocks because it's more effective. When I am looking for trips, when I start bidding for trips, I see more three day, four day trips. I don't really see, it's very rare you're going to see a five day trip. I think it's only one time I saw a five day trip and I have never seen a six day trip. So I try to go for three and four day trips or blocks because to me, I have a better chance of finding something. If crew schedule is not gonna use me, I bid. Just like this trip that I'm on right now in Orlando. I bid it for this trip. As soon as it dropped into our bidding system, bam, I was on it and I got it because I had the same amount of days for the trip. When we bid guys, so if you are good for four days, you should bid for a four day trip. It has to go day for day and then you have to have a legal period between when the trip ends and when your next uh, reserve day uh, begins. So you have a minimum of 11 hours rest when you are at base. So 11 hours from when your trip ends to when your next reserve period. You gotta keep that in mind. And then also with our schedules, we get between 11 and 12 days off. So also keep that in mind. And I know this is all sounding foreign to you, but trust me, it's something that I learned. I recommend you read your contract for any airline, read the contract. They should have a section about reserve. And even with my airline, my contract is public knowledge. You guys can Google it, but this is how I find out my information so I can tell you guys. But in a nutshell, those are the shifts for reserve. All right, guys, and the next thing I want to show you is my reserve schedule. So remember, guys, of what I taught you regarding the reserve shifts. You know what a reserve is. Now what we want to do is put it all together. So I'm going to show you my December schedule. Okay, so you can get a better understanding of what I'm talking about, guys. So um, without further ado, let me show you that schedule. Okay, here's my December schedule. So guys, that top part, we're not going to talk about just uh, right now. Now you guys can see on the first, I was off. The second, crew scheduling gave me a trip. I was off on the third. The fourth, the fourth guys, I was on reserve. And it's kind of weird. The fifth, I was on reserve. But I got a trip. So I bid it for this trip. And it was from Philly to MCO. So the trip actually ended on Saturday. So this was a three day uh, trip. Okay. The eighth is something that I picked up. Okay. The ninth, I was off. The 10th and 11th guys, I was on reserve. It was not used. The 12th was a trip given to me by crew scheduling. The 13th and the 14th. So I picked up a trip guys and it was actually um, a red eye. So that is the reason why the trip started on the 13th, but I came back to Denver on the 14th. So the 15th, I was off. 
The 16th, that was the night of my Christmas party, I was on reserve. The 17th, I had a couch. So that's how it looks on our schedule. The 18th, I went back on reserve. Okay, guys, now the 19th, <clears throat> you see a couple of things here and I want to explain. So the 19th is when I got my UTC, unable to contact. So they did put that on my schedule, but I talked to in-flight and they added me back on the schedule because I asked to finish my reserve period for that day. So that's a whole nother conversation. Okay, the 20th is a trip that I picked up on my day off because I had two days off. All right, the 21st. I'm off. The 22nd, that was a trip given to me by cruise scheduling. The 23rd, 24th, and 25th, as you can see guys, I was on reserve and was not used. The 26th, this is a trip that was given to me by cruise scheduling. I was off on the 27th. The 28th is a trip that cruise scheduling gave me. And then for the rest of the month, the 29th and the 30th, guys, I was on reserve and was not used. So one thing I want you guys to notice is that any trips that you see with a letter in front of it, like the D, 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 these are all trips. These are trips that are either given to us by cruise scheduling or trips that we bid for. Another thing to notice is how it looks for our reserve period. So again, because I'm reserve A, REA, and remember that's 1201 AM to 1300. That is how it will appear. <clears throat> now, remember I told you guys that you got to have a minimum of 11 days off in between trips. So for instance, you see here on the 12th, I have a trip. Well, in order for me to work on the 13th, I have got to have a least 11 hours of rest. So that is the reason why I got that trip on the 13th because I was on reserve on the 12th, but I got a trip from cruise scheduling and it would have put me at a illegal period if it was not the minimum 11 hours of rest. And then also you see my last trip on the 13th that went to the 14th. I took a day off on the 15th because I start a reserve period on the 16th. So these are things you have to remember when it comes to your schedule. Now let's talk about the top part. Okay guys, so the top part, as you can see my block, is 49 hours and five minutes. So just to explain what that means guys, block is when that main cabin door closes to when it opens. That is the estimated time for um, all the trips that I worked. 49 hours and five minutes. Now credit guys, credit is what you're actually being paid for. So whichever is greater, and I'll give you an example. Let's say I took a trip from Denver to Dallas, Texas. Now the block time could be two hours and 50 minutes, but the credit might be three hours. They're going to pay me for the credit because that is greater than the block time. So it all depends on how it works out. But as you can see, my credit of 63 hours and six minutes is greater. So that is what I got paid for. Year to date is basically the hours I worked all year. So remember, I graduated on the 28th, but my IOE was on September 11th. So from that date until the last day. So for those few months, I flew two hour, 213 hours and 27 minutes. And for the month of December, I have five days off. So remember guys, we are given between 11 and 12 days off. So as you guys can see, I had 11 days off. I picked up on my days off, which was the six minute or six days that I um, picked up guys. So this in a nutshell is the schedule for December. The last thing I want to talk about is money. So guys, uh, the number one question I really get is all around or involved with money. You guys wanna know, are you able to make it? 
what are your checks looking like, how much you're getting paid, etc. Well guys, I hope to answer your question in this segment. So guys, before I show you my paychecks, let me just go over a few things um, so you guys will have a clear understanding. So with my airline, we get paid two times a month, the 5th and the 20th, so semi-monthly. Now, depending on how those days fall, meaning if they fall on a Saturday, we get paid Friday. If it falls on a Sunday, we get paid Monday. Um, so based on that, that is how we get paid. Now, I just found out, because I have a check coming on the 20th. Well, because uh, Martin Luther King's birthday is on a Monday, we are going to get paid on Tuesday, the 21st. So guys, what I'm going to do is show you my paychecks from September 5th to January 5th. So there's a lot of pay uh, checks in there. We're gonna go over it. You guys are gonna see firsthand because what I want you guys to do is to get a clear understanding. Now, you know I gotta have my disclaimer. Guys, the results are gonna vary. This is how I make money. Everyone has a side hustle. There's different things that people do. This is how it's working for me. When I tell you guys I am really trying to keep my head above water, this is what I'm doing is trying to survive on reserve. It's a very hard task, but you're able to do it if you work hard, pick up, and aggressively bid for trips. You can't just sit around and hope crew scheduling calls you because boo, it may not happen. You guys saw my schedule. I have a lot of reserve days where I was not used. That's going to happen. So you got to find a different way to make money and to keep yourself in the game. So every airline is different, but this is how I'm able to do it with my airline. Um, so guys, the first checks I ever received from my company was in training. So in training, I got two checks. I got one check before graduation. The amount of that check was $396. And then my second check was the date of graduation. And the amount of that check was $363. So while in training for three and a half weeks, we got paid a per diem. So I forgot what the average was, but that is the money I received while training. So again, the first check was on the fifth. Um, so you guys are gonna be able to see how my income, how it started and how it gradually has increased. And so like I said, guys, the 28th of this month will be five months that I have been a flight attendant. So I am halfway there. And when I mean halfway there, our probation is nine months. So I am halfway through this process, guys. And the more that I am growing in my career, the more things that I am learning. So again, this is just a guide. If you are planning on becoming a flight attendant with my airline, you guys can kind of look and kind of see how I'm surviving. Of course, you may have, have a different way, but this is how I'm doing it. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the money and let me show you these checks. Okay, guys, and here are just a quick little view of all my pay stubs. Okay, you guys can see that and we're going to go over all of them together. So just bear with me. This is going to be a long little segment here. So guys, the first check, September the 5th, let's look at that one. Okay, guys, so my first check was $629.22. It was paid on the 5th, and that was for, um, you know, my guaranteed is 75. So 37 and a half goes on the first check, and then the other 37 and a half goes on the second. So there is the first half there. Okay, regular guaranteed, that is the uh, 37 and a half hours times my hourly wage of $23.56. All right, deductions. Okay, guys, uniform deduction one of $52. So while in training, we received a tote. Um, so they took that out of our check instead of us paying for it up front. Uniform deduction two is my uniform. So my uniform pieces came up to be a little over $600. So guys, I will be paying uh, my uniform's off for the rest of my life, the way it's looking. All right, taxes. Denver, because I'm based in Denver, 575. 
uh, Medicare, federal income tax, and Social Security. And so that first check post-training, that is how we got to 629.22. All right, guys, in the next check, this is going to be the second check, September the 20th. All right, and let's take a look at that. Okay, guys, so they told us in training our second check is going to be the lowest, okay? It's for 7.5 hours. Now, guys, I remember this check. So in training, we had until the 27th to do our insurance benefits, well, our benefits in general, um, like life insurance, healthcare, dental, et cetera. I purposely waited until after we got this check because I knew this check was going to be low. And some of my classmates, guys, their check was not even, like I think this is a high check um, in my class because a lot of people got 30 and $40 checks because that um, health insurance came out. But your girl, she purposely waited. Okay, so earnings. So guys, I have a parking pass of $36. Okay, regular guarantee time zero, regular pay 176.70. And the regular pay is the hours here, I believe times 23.56. Okay, deduction. So you guys know deduction one is the tote, already paid it off. Uniform, $50. They're going to take that out until the day I die. And then the taxes. No taxes for Denver were taken out, but you guys can look at the rest of that breakdown. Because the check was so small, so good, they spared me something. And that is how we came to that amount. All right, guys. And then we're going to look at the first check. So guys, this a check on October 4th is going to be reflective of September. So let's see how this check broke down. Okay, so you guys see the amount. It got paid on October the 4th. And now this is the first check. So guys, my per diem is going to show up. So it was for 37 and a half hours. So you guys can see 342 I believe that stands for, again, long-term disability. Now, guys, look at my per diem, $316.56, okay? No parking pass on this check. Uh, regular guarantee time is the $23.56 times the 37 and a half hours. So that is how we came up with $883.50. Regular pay, it's nine. It's going to be on a second check. Taxable per diem. So you see, guys, 1983. Now, I currently figure out what this means. Um, so anytime I do a turn, and what I mean by a turn is if I went to like Vegas, I'm sorry, Denver to Vegas and coming back, they are going to tax me on that per diem. And so that's what that is. Deductions. I believe that's company paid LTD zero and then they took back the 342 standard dental and vision is always free so you're going to see zero dollars for those two deduction one tote paid for deduction two is my uniform now guys this is why the last check on the 20th of september i did not um select to have that taken out just yet and you guys can see they charged me um it looks like for a whole month's worth of my health insurance that's that value hd hp and then vision is zero dollars because my company pays for di uh, oh my gosh my company pays for dental and vision okay taxes this is how it's broken down here okay and that is how i came up well they came up with that amount which is a pretty good check All right, guys, so the second check, October 21st, 782.31, and let's take a look. Okay, so this check was paid for on the 21st, 
Now look at the hours, guys, 41.50. So guys, remember the second check is gonna be a cleanup check. So this uh, should show credit cards. It should show the remaining hours outside of the 75 and also any tips. All right, and as you can see, F9, F8 tips, $46.73. They gave me $342 for the LTD. Per diem is on the first check, not the second. $36 for a parking pass. Now guys, we have a regular guarantee time. Now, I believe this is the um, hours that I picked up. No, no, regular guarantee time. No, um, Maybe that is my regular pay. And the regular pay, I believe, is the hours that I picked up outside of my 75. Yeah, that's about right. So regular guarantee time is my regular wage and then the regular pay is the hours I picked up taxable per diem zero dollars but speaking of regular pay guys look how much money I made so this is when I really start picking up on my days off and you guys will see that deductions you guys will see them here and you guys know what the deductions are so see my health insurance was 6629 again my uniform still going to come out and this is how the taxes were taken out of my check for that one and guys this is how we came up with that amount okay guys now we're going to go into November so November guys 878 81 and let's take a look here okay so this is going to be reflective of October so remember we always get paid for the previous month so this uh, check was given to me on November 5th so already it's 37 and a half hours right there tips it's not going to show on this check but the second check okay they gave me 342 now look at my per diem I made 192 76 no parking pass amount okay regular guarantee time is the 37 and a half hours times 2356 okay regular pay is going to be on my second check taxable per diem guys 7313 and again you guys know what that is here are my deductions All right, and remember, deduction for the uniform two is a uniform, so two hundred fifty dollars, and then here is the taxes taken out of that check, and this is how we came up with that figure, or how they came up with the figure. Okay, guys, the second check is the one. For November on the 20th so let's take a look at that one there okay now guys this check is going to be a little bit more so again this is one when, when I really start picking up on my days off and you guys are going to see the difference that makes so look at the amount now this was paid on the 20th of November so this is all reflective of what I did in October okay look at those total hours 49 79 now let's go down to the earnings okay guys so f9 card this is credit cards so for october i got two approved credit cards so every approved credit card is 50 dollars. so they added a hundred dollars to my paycheck tips 69.83 so that really helps guy with uh, guys within a month's time those tips do add up time and a half okay I went over my 75 and got overtime look at the amount 183.41 okay and then they gave me that LTD there is no per diem because remember it's on the first check 36 for a parking pass okay guys now regular guarantee time now as you can see this is my regular pay 
um, like 37 and a half hours plus. I'm not sure how they came up with this figure, but I know it's a part of that. 533.16. Now, guys, the regular pay, this is the extra hours I picked up outside of my 75. You see how much money that was. So it's a really good check. Retro pay, eleven seventy eight, no taxable per diem. And here are my deductions. So $300 so far, I pay towards my uniform. And then as far as taxes, guys, you can see how that is broken down. Okay, and this is how I got that large amount so this was a good check november 20th guys i definitely did my thousand dollar dance okay guys now we're going to go into to, uh december so december the 5th remember this is reflective for november and guys this is when i was really picking up okay so this is the first check that is the amount that was paid on December 5th. So you guys know on the first check, I'm gonna get the half of my guarantee. Now then remember the first check is the per diem. So you guys are gonna see a lot of that. Okay, so the credit cards is not gonna show up on the first check, but the second. The tips is gonna show up on the second check. No time and a half. They gave me 342 for the LTD. Now look at my per diem. It was two seventy five fifty seven. Okay, so that was a good flying for me as well for uh, November. Parking pass zero. Regular guarantee time. Remember, guys, that is the thirty seven and a half times twenty three point fifty six, which is my hourly wage. Regular pay. That's going to be on the next check, the second one. Taxable per diem one hundred and nine and seven cents. Okay, and there are those deductions right there. Let's see my uniform, $350, wow. Okay, and then there are the breakdown of those taxes. And so this is how I was able to make that amount. Okay, and guys, the second check in December, guys, this was a fat check. So let's take a look at this beautiful check. Okay, guys, so that is the amount, $1,186.72. Again, guys, this is all reflective of November. So look at the total hours, 60 hours and 45 minutes. Okay, so I did not get any credit cards for that month. But my tips, guys, $103.57. So you guys can see how those tips add up, baby. Don't be too proud to get a tip, because I'm not. Okay, no time and a half, $342 for that LTD. No per diem, because it's on the first check. Over 75 hours, I got $43.59. They gave me $36 for a parking pass. Now, guys, my regular guarantee time is the 37 and a half. Okay, and some others. I don't know how they came up with that figure, but I know that's what that is. Now look at my regular pay. So you know what? $883.50. So guys, maybe on this one that is wrong because that looks like the $83.50 is the uh, my 23.56 times 37 and a half. So maybe they got this wrong. Maybe my regular guarantee was that, but yeah. Either way, it's large figures, guys. So I believe it's reverse. I think regular pay is my 37 and a half, and the regular guarantee time is the extra hours I picked up outside of my 75. No retro pay, no uh, taxable per diem, because that is on the second check. I'm sorry, the first check. Here are those deductions. Okay, so I'm at 400 with my uniform. All right, I gotta keep track of that. And then the taxes. Okay, so guys, this is how, this is my largest paycheck to date. I think the check on the 21st is gonna be larger, but 
there it is this is the most beautiful check I have received thus far all right guys and the last check is the one that was paid on January the 6th and guys this is the amount eight hundred and fifty seven dollars and eighteen cents and you guys can see it was for thirty seven and a half hours and then here are the earnings here so they gave me a uh, 342 for the LTD per diem 143.10 regular guarantee 80, 883 and 50 and you guys know that's the 23.56 times 37 and a half hours all right taxable per diem 116.16 wow I need to stop doing turns is what I'm seeing Okay, deductions. Here they are. So uniform. Oh, it's because it's a new year. <gasps> wow. So what well, I should be at 450 then. I just noticed that. Oh, and y'all see, look it. I have this is my first time looking at this check. But as y'all can see, my insurance went up. My health insurance. It was 66, I believe. Now it's 74, 63. So wow. That has went up. Hmm, okay. And y'all can see the taxes, how that was broken down. Okay, guys, so this is how I earned that amount. All right, guys, so you have seen my pay. So, guys, I am, like, very, very happy because, as you guys can see, my largest check was $1,100. And, guys, this is really picking up on your days off. So again, we are given 11 to 12 days off. I showed you guys my schedule in December. I had five days off. That is my goal because those six days I am picking up. Now looking at my paychecks, I should probably limit my turns because I'm getting taxed on that per diem. But guys, I'm telling you, as a reserve, we are chasing that per diem. A line holder is going to be chasing the credit hours because that is what they get paid for. As a reserve, you're going to always get your guarantee of 75. And you guys saw how that was broken down. 37 and a half on one check, 37 and a half on the uh, second check. So reserve, per diem, line holder, the hours. So you guys kind of got a look into how I am getting paid. So guys, you guys saw how I started off in the sixes, and now I'm in the high nines to the thousands just depending on the month and guys this is really why i don't like not being used on my reserve days this is why i don't like sitting couch because if i'm not flying i'm not getting that per diem i don't get per diem on reserve unless i fly like this trip here in orlando even though my second leg got canceled to st louis i'm not doing that vegas turn I'm still getting per diem because I'm away from Denver. So either way, how you look at it, guys, it's all about making money. Again, everyone has a side hustle. Credit cards is not really my thing. You guys saw how many credit cards that I sold or not sold that was approved. Like even for my next check, I'm going to get $50. I showed you guys that in the video. Um, $50 is going to be um, what I am going to be credit for for credit cards. My thing is picking up. The more I pick up, guys, that's extra money. And that's a regular, my regular pay of $23.56. And it adds up. I'm telling you, you guys just saw. So can you survive on reserve? Yes, you can. Can you make it? Yes, you can. You just got to hustle, guys. Like, y'all sacrifice too much to get to this point. You left your job, your family, loved ones, friends, so many sacrifices you made to be a flight attendant. It would be a disservice to your family and to yourself for you to get into this business and quit or you can't make it. That's why you got to have a side hustle. That's why I'm showing you guys my paycheck because I want you guys to see that you are able to make it. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it's hard. You know, I get frustrated. That's why I really don't like sitting and waiting. I'd rather be making money. And when I'm flying, I am making money. Whether it's a per diem, tips. Like, guys, that all adds up. Within a month's time, as you guys can see in my paychecks, you can make extra money. 
and that is what it's all about guys is on reserve every little coin counts you know like i said i'm going to uh start paying union dues i think my next check so I'm going to have my uniform of $50 and then my union dues, I believe, of $25. I don't know if it's $25 or $50. So guys, I need to keep on doing these things so I can stay in the game. So I really hope this video was helpful. Again, guys, everyone's results will vary. But I guarantee you, if you pick up on your days off, you will be able to survive. Don't be like some people and, you know, be lazy or don't try guys you have got to try money is not going to be given to you you have to work hard for it just like a regular job you would do overtime or pick up extra shifts that does not stop as a flight attendant guys like i am constantly looking at people dropping trips i am constantly looking at the trade board like guys if i'm able to work i am going to do it because that's what kind of person i am i can't allow the difference in income from my last job to this job change how I am because I mean because just because my career changed my job and my income has changed my bills haven't I still got that car payment I still got car insurance I still got to pay rent you see what I'm saying guys so I am hustling like I got kids to feed like I really have to guys so again I hope this video is helpful if you guys have questions, you guys know how to reach out to me, but this is as honest as I can be. I am showing you guys the real. I'm giving you the real tea. There is no sugarcoating, guys. This is the absolute truth. And I challenge y'all ask these people that y'all follow on YouTube, these flight attendants, tell them to show you their paychecks. Like who's really doing this, guys? Like I showed you every paycheck, just about every paycheck I have ever made. Like, this is some real stuff, y'all. Like, if you think, you think you know, but you have no idea until you get into the lifestyle, guys. So, that's why I'm showing you this, okay? But like I said, guys, in all my videos, thank you guys for rocking with me. My channel is growing, and I thank you guys. Tell your mama, tell your friends, tell your cousins, guys. Seriously, spread the word. I am a struggling flight attendant, guys, trying to help somebody out. If you like this video thumbs up subscribe guys be a part of the notification notification gang i'm trying to add more videos like i got footage but i have to edit and i gotta be careful guys because you know the feds are watching okay so i have to be very careful but thank you guys so much again it's a brand new year but the same me i'm gonna always stick to being real with you guys so until the next video i love you guys take care